All right, today's August 22nd, Second. 2015, and my name is Rusty Frank, and I am here with the man who saved my life 15 years ago. This is my paramedic, Keith Scott. Yes, <laughs> I am yeah. definitely your paramedic. You've told everybody I am. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's how I'll probably yeah. be at my retirement party yeah. too, huh? Yeah, it's my paramedic. Yeah. So um, my friend Teresa Medbury has been on my case to start documenting episodes of my life. And this is that's one that uh, I really, really wanted to remember with Keith because I have my memory of hmm. the day. And So do I. And so I just thought when we reconnected this past year, I, I asked him if he would be willing to do this, and he said yes, because he has memories of it, too. I asked him of if he course. remembered. I figured he does so many rescues. I should uh, maybe back up a little bit and say that he was the paramedic on the, f the fire department force that came yes. and answered the 911 call when I broke my neck. And so mm -hmm. um, which, which fire department were you working for at that time? Well, it's L.A. City Fire Department. Okay. I was working on Rescue 89 out of North Hollywood. Okay, for that I guess, day. Okay, and it was June second, two thousand. And yes. can you tell me what you remember about that day? Well, it was it was interesting. It it, it came in as a regular call. Uh, I believe it was an injury. Uh, one thing I noticed is that the uh, the call uh, was not in our first in. It was actually in sixties first in, which is south of where I was uh, working for that day. So I knew that we'd get an engine company ahead of us, and the engine company has two firefighter paramedics, or excuse me, firefighter EMTs on board, and I knew they'd get there, they'd get there first. And that's exactly what happened. So when we arrived on scene, I noticed the two firefighters uh, treating Rusty, and they were preparing to put a cervical collar on, and our standard procedure is to go to the firefighters, find out what they have information wise and then I'll assess the patient when I walked up to Rusty I noticed something immediately there was a fear in her eyes that only comes when you're injured um, and so immediately uh, I had chills up my back tell you the truth because um, we do a lot of cervical protection, but very few times is it actually related to an actual incident, an actual fracture. So based on the history and what I saw from Rusty, um, I stopped everything immediately. I said, guys, hold on one second here. Let me do an assessment real quick, and then we'll, we'll proceed with the cervical collar and the backboard. And so I remember leaning over Rusty and looking into her eyes, and uh, there was just fear. There was fear. She um, grabbed hold of my hand, and I don't think she ever let go for the entire time that we were transporting to the hospital. It seemed like it. Uh, but um, I remember telling her that we'll take care of her. Please don't worry. Just relax yourself. We're going to be doing some things. We're going to be putting a collar around your neck. We're going to be putting you on a long board. And we're going to be putting tape on your forehead so that you don't move your neck. We're going to be putting binders around your body so that you don't move. The reason for this is we want to keep the spine completely in line, completely intact. We'll go to the hospital. We'll get some x-rays. We'll find out exactly what's going on. But I don't want you to worry. Anytime we have to move you, we will move you. We don't want you to move. She didn't take her eyes off me the entire time I was telling her that, um, which again is another indication that she was, she was quite scared. We got her on the backboard and uh, I remember loading her into the, into the rescue, reassessing her vital signs, and uh, thought that there was really something going on here uh, from the neurological assessment that I did. Uh, she had some tingling in both her, her upper extremities and her back area and she had some definite pain in her neck. So I remember instructing my, um, my driver, uh, we were closest to, um, I believe that was North Hollywood Hospital at the North, time. Northridge. But I knew oh. that there was a neurosurgeon on staff at Northridge Hospital. 
So I phoned Northridge, asked if we could come there. Of course, they said yes. And when we drove over there, I remember telling my partner, I want you to go code three, but I don't want you to go more than 15 miles per hour. <laughs> you dodge every bump and every dip in the road you can. And he understood, and that's exactly what we did. It was probably the longest code three transport I've ever been on. <laughs> but, uh, but we knew what was, what was at stake here and that's what we needed to do so we got over to northridge i remember loading her onto the uh onto the bed and again she wouldn't let go of my hand she wouldn't let me leave at all um so i think we got uh, a couple of x-rays uh with you holding me and <laughs> and uh but then finally she did she was she felt pretty good and and so um we had to make ourselves available but she promised she made me promise that I would come back and see her and normally that's uh, that's against the rules we normally do not we're not allowed to uh, re-establish contact with patients but I made her a promise so I did and uh, what was a couple days later that we we saw each other again in the hospital oh my god first oh, of all thanks <laughs> Yeah, it makes me a little bit, uh, gets me a little teary-eyed, yeah. too, because of uh, what was at stake. I knew what was at stake. This was mm. absolutely amazing for me to hear his side of the story um, for the very first time. We've stayed in touch these past 15 years, but I've never asked him what he remembered from that day. And it's, it's now I think he'll be interested to hear my side of the story. Mm. Absolutely. Because it's in concert. Oh, good. Yeah. I was living on Riverside Drive in Studio City and had a little apartment that had a little grass lawn in front of the apartment with a little fence Jeez. and then a sidewalk and then Riverside Drive. I can picture it right uh -huh. now. And so my dance partner, Peter Flayhiff, and I, we had learned aerials that we were putting into our swing dance routine. So when there was one we had been working on for about four months, and we finally had gotten it all the way through. It took us quite a long time to get this one all the way through because it involved a little jump up into his arms and then a dive through the legs and then um, catching the legs and coming up the other side. But we had it and we were just practicing it because with aerials you have to really do a lot of training to be safe with them. And we had worked with trainers on this one. So we would practice a couple times a week going over all the aerials that we knew and this was one that we were putting the finishing touches on, really focusing on the technique. and. Um, we were on the front lawn practicing, and I remember thinking, this is kind of stupid. We have a gig tonight at Suzy Q's we're going to be teaching. It's mm. kind of stupid. Like, I could, I could, like, sprain my pinky. I actually said that in my head. I could sure. sprain my pinky. And uh, we were practicing. It was a beautiful, sunny day. I just remember mm -hmm. typical L.A. day, blue sky, not a cloud, yeah. just beautiful. And we were doing the move where I jumped up. It was a shadow Charleston move. I jump up into his arms, he caught me. I prep like this and I go to dive down to catch, catch his legs where you have to put your arms behind it. And suddenly he wasn't there. He wasn't there. He had, something had gone wrong with it and it had, uh, whatever happened when I leaned forward, he felt a push back and he kind of stumbled backwards, lost contact with me. And when I went to reach for his legs, he There's wasn't there. There was nothing there. There was nothing there. And it was, where I was diving straight, straight down, yeah. and with my arms behind me, and there was no split second to put my hands to the ground. And I remember, all I remember was saying, he's not there, and then, boom, Damn. straight into the ground on my head. And I remember hearing this sound of, like, a big mm. celery stalk that you twist, and I just remember hearing all this, like that. And then the next thing, and I never blacked out, is I remember lying on my, I remember, not lying on my back, I remember floating in the air mm. in, in this kind of, in the last position that I was, which was this curled up position. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I was floating on my back, just floating, because I couldn't feel a thing mm -hmm. for, for, I guess, minutes. Yeah. I couldn't feel anything. And I remember just floating. And the first thought that went through my head, the very first thought was, this is very serious. Ooh. You know, because usually you fall, you do something, you go, oh, my elbow. But this one, I go, oh, this is very serious. And then I remember Peter leaning over, looking at me, and I couldn't speak yet. And I remember him looking over at me with eyes as though, 
he had killed me mm. because I realized he, I wasn't breathing, I wasn't blinking, I was just staring up. And I finally could, I was trying so hard to be able to let him know that I was still alive. And I just remember trying to force out. And the first thing I said was, because I didn't want him to think that he had killed me. So I said, this wasn't your fault. And I, I said that so that in case something did happen that mm -hmm. he wouldn't have to live with that guilt forever. Then he, he was, I, he, I said, I was saying, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. And he said, and so I tried to, he said, I think you are breathing. I see your chest going up and down. Mm -hmm. And so he, he took out his cell phone. He tried to call the 911 on the cell phone. He said, well, that was a bust. It just didn't go through. So he ran upstairs to my apartment. And so now I'm by myself he, to, oh call, my to call 911. So he was gone for maybe a minute or, and, and I was lying on the ground and I remember looking up and I, I saw a woman walking down the street and I was trying to call for help, but I couldn't speak yet. So I was just going like, and I remember her looking at me, walking and looking at me and just walking by. And I've thought about that for years. And I finally decided I probably just looked like I was sunbathing, mm -hmm. you know, but here I was, you know, this was my, my one chance for somebody to save my life. And she, you know, she's walking by, just gave, gave me a little glance and then kept walking. The next thing I remember is the looking up at the sky, because I, I guess I was on my back and I looking thinking, how interesting that this is totally not how I thought death would be. I thought yeah. death would be really loud. And it was so quiet. It was just this absolute quiet and just looking at the sky and hearing the cars going by on the street. And I thought, <laughs> it was just very, really different than I thought it would be. And then I remember thinking, okay, this is it. So you can, you, you have a choice now to live or die. Because I still felt if I wanted to, I could make it back. And so this was when this cascade really fast went through my head. So I had gone through a kind of a rush, rough emotional time prior to this, uh, about eight months prior, and it had been still hanging with me. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you've been really depressed. You, you, you can go right now. And he said, you can go right now. You've had a great life. You've seen the world. You've done a lot of good, um, a full life. You can go. You can go. And then I said, um, I don't want to go yet. I think there's, I still don't know what's around the corner. And that was a big thought. I still, I'm not done yet. And that was the thought. I'm not done yet. I don't know what's around the corner. There's still something around the corner. And then I said, okay, well, if you come back. And this was happening so fast. Like, I'm talking about it now, but this was going like super fast. And then it was like, okay, if you, if you decide to come back, could you handle being a quadriplegic? And I was, no. And then could you handle being a paraplegic? And I said, yes. And then I said, but I don't think I'm going to be a paraplegic. I think I'm going to be okay. And I said, okay, then start fighting. And so that's when I actually started trying to scream because in dancing, it's a trick I use when I'm trying to get breath is just to start yelling. Because if you yell out, then oxygen comes in. Right. And by this time, now Peter's back and I hear sirens. And now, now we'll come into this story. So that, that part that Keith told about the call going into another station answers this, which I've always wondered about. Because there was a fire engine that came first. And I was still at a point where I was completely paralyzed. I could not feel a thing. And I was lying... I, all I knew was I was looking straight up. So this whole sequence is very cinematic to me because I could only look up. And I remember these, I remember four guys around me, and it could have been two, but I remember four guys leaning in over me, reaching for me. And they were young guys in their 20s, they seemed to me. And I said, these guys are going to kill me. Because I knew that I, I knew that I was, had, I was paralyzed. And I knew if they moved me, they were going to kill me. And, I, and that is the fear that he was talking about. I was absolutely terrified at this point because mm -hmm. I said, these guys are going to kill me. And then I heard you going, let go of her, stand back, don't touch her. And I, I that's what that, I yeah. heard. I, I heard that. these barking commands. And they went from reaching over me to backing up. Yeah. And then I see this face, this face, <laughs> <laughs> this face, yeah, right. leaning over me. And he's looking at me. And I said, this man is going to save my life. Hmm. I knew it. And that was the look he got from me. 
that from that absolute terror yeah. that these guys were going to kill me to this guy's going to save my life. Well, what was interesting too, I do remember now yelling at them <laughs> and uh, unfortunately sometimes that's my personality. When you have to do something, you have to do it. But I knew it was the real thing and I think I told them that. I said, guys, this is the real thing. We got to do this exactly by the books, okay? I didn't want them to move you unless I said move. I didn't want them to do anything. Not that I'm any great thing, but in something like this, there can be only one person in charge. It has to be directed properly. So, and I just did it by the book. It, it wasn't anything special that I did. See, this is the part I love. We just did it by the book. But that, that's what I saw when I saw him lean over me. Was oh, I knew I was going to cry today. I don't know. I knew that I saw in his face. Um, it's okay. I saw in his face you that he knew that he got it and that he had the experience and that he knew what was going on. And I really said that. He was going to save my life. Well, we just did it by the book. <laughs> you saved your life. You did it. And we'll talk about that in a minute because that's that's pretty remarkable. So now I'm clutching on this. Yeah, <laughs> like she did <laughs> 15 years ago. I recognize that grip. Oh. Except it was much more strong at the time. <laughs> <laughs> and I do remember not being able to unlock my eyes looking at him on that whole ride yeah. to the hospital. And that was a long ride to the hospital. Yeah, it was. And I remember... I remember um, them getting, you know, strapped onto the yeah. gurney, and I remember feeling that lift, that sudden lift, and then you were still on top of these guys to be really careful on the smooth transfer. Right. Because what is it? They they slipped a board under me first. Yeah. Uh huh. And and that is a trick in itself, uh, rolling you in one, keeping you stabilized, and rolling you in order to get the the backboard underneath you. What's the trick on that? Keeping the spine in line. How did and they, they do did, that? They did an excellent job. Well, we had two hands on both sides of your head, and as the body moved, the head moved at the same rate, and then back, so that there's no differentiation at all. Wow. So one, one thing is that Peter remembered that I was kind of still curled up and when, from the fall, because it was a, you know, I hit on my head and then kind of crumbled. Mm. And he said that he remembers unrolling me before okay. the... Paramedics got well, I know when I came, you were completely flat on your okay. back. Yeah, so I guess he just said he just kind of finished that. Okay. <sighs> yeah, I guess that was yeah. Um, so then, once they do that transfer under the board, then that that board goes onto the gurney. That board goes onto the gurney, yeah. And then that. Yeah. Well, well before did... that, we'll strap you down with some binder straps so that your body doesn't move. We'll put couple of pieces of foam on both sides of your head and then put a piece of uh, God, adhesive to the forehead so that it doesn't move yeah but you could have moved if you wanted to that's just a reminder yeah not to. I couldn't uh, at that point so. so the next thing I remember is getting into the into the um, ambulance mm -hmm. now how do they how does the gurney itself go into the ambulance or does that another yeah. transfer uh, no we lifted once you were on the backboard, we lifted you up onto the gurney and then put another two straps on you <laughs> so you wouldn't get up and run away. That's kind of embarrassing sometimes. Yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> and uh, then we wheeled you to the gurney, and it's a uh, what they call a one-man gurney, which means it only takes one person to load you into the rescue. Okay. So I remember uh, being situated that my, back, my head was closer to the driver and that you were sitting. Yes. At my kind of by my feet or uh, that direction. I was well. I was sitting near your shoulder. Oh, okay. Your left shoulder. <laughs> Seemed really far away. Then. Yeah. And what I remember is you started, um, you know, asking me a lot of questions in rapid fire, and it was mm -hmm. so hard for me to talk still. In, oh, you know, another thing I remember is when I was lying on the ground, I wiggled my toes, mm -hmm. and I don't remember at what stage that was, but I went like that, just wiggled my toes like a little bit, and I said. That's when I realized, I said, I've seen the movies. If you can wiggle your toes, you're going to be able to walk. Okay. <laughs> okay, so now I remember we're in, the, we're in the ambulance. You were asking me a lot of questions, like what kind of um, health coverage I had. I had Kaiser. 
Oh, did I? Or don't yeah, remember I remember the that. health coverage questions. Yeah. But yeah, as I was Kaiser, and you said, "Well, I'm not going to take you to Kaiser. I'm taking you to um, oh, okay. Northridge because they have the best spinal cord unit." I mm-hmm. remember you saying that, and I remember saying, "How come we're not? I, I how come we're not taking a helicopter?" Do you remember me? Oh gosh, yeah, I do now remember <laughs> you asking about the helicopter. Okay. Do you remember what you said? Uh, no. Or what you would have said? Uh, Probably it just it didn't warrant it. It was probably uh, well, this it way, would have shaken you too much. That's what he said. He said that it, that, that the, the helicopters the vibrate the the vibration, and so and I remember saying stuff like, "Can we go faster?" And you said, "I know this is going to be a really long drive, yeah. but I." But we have to be so careful. And I remember you barking mm-hmm. to the driver several times. Well, I hope I didn't bark at him, but... But you were just like, you know, be careful, <laughs> slow really, down. It was really important to me, yeah. And then I remember that you started poking all around to see where I could feel. And you were doing mm-hmm. it really fast. And you're like, can you feel this? Can you feel this? Can you feel this? Can you feel... Did I? Yeah. I and I said, can fast. you slow down? And then <laughs> when that. you came to visit me in the hospital, you said, you're the only person that's ever yelled at me. <laughs> Oh, I think you did. Yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, what do you mean yellow? And then you said that when I was asking you to, to slow down on the poking. Okay. That I yelled okay. at you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm sure I deserved it. No. <laughs> no. But I think it was more like, I just like, like give me some time to register between yeah. pokes. Sure. Um, but that's really interesting because there's there's quite a bit that I don't remember. Mm-hmm. Uh in uh, things that were said and not said in this, but it, um, like I said, our stories are really in concert, but it's it fills in a lot of information Does for it? me. Okay. Now, when you came to the hospital, so now in between him coming to the hospital, what happened was I was put in ICU, mm. x-rays were done, MRIs were done, and it was established that I had um, five breaks, uh, one at C1, two, one at C1, it's five, C1, oh, C2, it? and C6. Oh, three in C2. That oh, was it, three in C2. It okay. I knew no, it was three vertebrae, but I didn't. Yeah, one, so two, one, and two, six. and six. So they had decided that they were clean breaks and that they were going to, instead of doing any kind of surgery, they decided to do a cervical halo, a halo yeah. brace. And so they were going to do it the next day. So this was another probably most terrifying, yeah, you yeah. know, amongst the top 10 most terrifying moments of my life was overnight they had all that rig that you had done with the I remember those pillows smashed against yeah. me and I remember the tape on my head and being completely pinned down right. and what I was terrified was I was terrified that some night worker would come in and move me just by oh. accident you know like lift up my head to sure. change a pillow yeah. Yeah. and I don't I tried to stay awake all night oh, to make gosh. sure that didn't happen because the the man who was going to put on the halo brace wasn't coming in until the next day yeah. So they, um, yeah, so he came in and I was like, bring on the power tools. That's how I felt. Like, they explained to me how it was going to go, that he was going to screw these screws into my head and that this thing was going to be attached by that. And I was, when he came, he literally had, I remember a power tool. And I remember hearing, Oh, boy. (laughs) 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 Really? Yeah. I couldn't wait for that thing to get put on. Wow. Um, so then uh, that was the beginning of the long haul, and the long haul uh, continues to this day. Um, but the, the intense long haul was the, the weeks in the hospital, yeah. because I really went from being... It's so interesting that you said I grabbed your hand, because I remember I couldn't even feel anything, but I can imagine oh, okay. that I grabbed your hand, yeah. <laughs> and I Boy. completely paralyzed, still grabbing his hand. Yeah. And I remember really well you coming back to the hospital. Oh, good. I really remember <clears throat> that. It was good. so important to me. So I'm glad you broke I knew it protocol. Was. Yeah. And I remember seeing you in that. I wasn't quite prepared for the halo, but uh, but I knew that's probably how you'd be, you know, so. He just came in with this huge smile on Aww. his face. And I think that by him coming in and telling me, I was, I, he just again reassured me I was going to be okay. Yeah. I think even, you know, in the ambulance, you were the first one to say you're going to be okay. And I, I believed it. Yeah, you know, I believed it. I thought so, and then you said it, and that was what that was the seed that needed to be planted right at that time. Okay. I don't think a lot of people understand what it takes to heal from an injury like this. It's uh, it's pretty incredible, pretty remarkable, 
and I'll try to get through this without choking up here, but it's true, that a lot of people tell us as firemen and paramedics, and they call us heroes, and that's never sat well <laughs> with me at all. But after that day, um, and the uh, weeks and months to come, I had a hero, and she's it. Because what she had to go through to, uh, to get back to where she is now is incredible. My part in this took maybe an hour, I guess, if we stretched it from start to finish. Her part in this took a strong six months and then years after that. And to do what you're doing now, uh, following what you went through is incredible. Absolutely incredible. It really, really is. So, you say I saved your life. I don't think so. You saved your own life. And you are my hero, sweetie. <laughs> I know, I know. Yes, you are. Mwah. See, now I tell you, you got me all, <laughs> all watery-eyed, too. But uh, it's a great story. God, what a great story. I know. Let's see. And we stayed in touch all these years. You stayed in touch all these years. You were much more better at it than, than I was. Yeah, I took some tracking down to find him um, because I thought he had come from the other station. Oh, right. The one nearby. 60s, yeah. But they were really nice at that station, and they told me where you were. And sure. so... I think I, the first time I, I can't remember if I sent you a Christmas card or something the first time, and then I wanted That's to right. come over and see you, and then I just, like every year, he got a Christmas card from me, and then I started saying, like, what the heck, we should be friends. Yeah. And I called him up one time, I said, I'm going to be performing, and and you said, I'd love to come and see you. Oh, yeah. And this was up at the Argyle Hotel That's on Sunset right. Boulevard. right. Oh, yes. And that's this was right. about a year later, I think. Uh, it was longer than that. Maybe two years? Yeah, I think it was, yeah. Yeah. He came up and he started crying <laughs> there. <laughs> and he says, I never. Never cried. Never no. cried. But I remember we, it was just, just like this one of these moments where we just, our eyes went, you know, yeah. flood of tears. But do you remember what you said to me then? When you said, um, I never get to see this. Oh. Yeah, I never get right. to see the follow up of the people that I encountered. Yes, that's very true. That's very true. Every once in a while, we'll get people coming back to the station to say thank you, um, and but not from something like this. From something like this, this was incredible, incredible. Yeah. Wow. Whew. Yeah, I do remember going back to the station in those '60s and uh, talking to the guys. Really. Yeah, because uh, uh, I I I do remember barking some orders at him and perhaps I was a little too stern but it was very important at the time mm -hmm. so and I wanted them to know exactly what had happened to you and ha what a great job they did and they did I can't do that by myself okay yeah yeah between my partner and and the firefighters that helped oh uh, yeah it was a group effort and uh, oh that's neat then. yeah yeah but to keep them informed too I thought it was really important and they really appreciated that Oh. So they didn't hate me for yelling at them. <laughs> <laughs> but then they knew you had done the right thing. Well, they had, they had knew that that we did the right thing. Yeah. We did it together. Yeah. It wasn't it wasn't just me. Gosh, no. Oh, yeah. oh God, I'll never forget that 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 moment of seeing them, and them pulling out of the frame, and then you coming into the frame, oh. and that difference. I'm trying to remember. Was it last year that we got in contact again? You know, we get in contact like once a year and have a nice catch up on the phone, or we meet it was for lunch. A couple lunch. years ago now. When so we meet for lunch, and you told me that you had had a quintuple bypass. Oh gosh, yeah. I guess was it, it was after that. Uh -huh. He had a quintuple bypass, and we had lunch, and he said that one of the interesting things about having a bypass, they had warned him that depression can follow. Yeah. And, he, and he said, you know, I'm a paramedic and I see this stuff all the time and I knew it in my head that this was could yeah. be a possibility. And, and indeed, after the surgery, uh, I did have a little bit. So I decided to attack this. I know where she's going. And um, I'm going to attack it by filling my life with things that I've been wanting to do for a long time. And one of the things I've been wanting to do for a long time yep. is... Swing dance. 
Dance with Rusty. <laughs> Been dying to dance with Rusty for 15 years. <laughs> she has bugged me and bugged me. Come on down, come on down, come on down. And I never have. So Until he, then. So he actually came into my level one class. Mm-hmm. And I promised him I wouldn't say anything who he was in front of the class. And it was a really fun, big group of yeah. people. And great, I had the hardest time holding it together. And because I just wanted to kind of shout with joy who this guy oh, was no. and everything. And yes. I didn't, I was cool until the last session of the four weeks. And when we all gather around and I do the little etiquette talk, and yes. I said, Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I now have to tell you who this man is. <sighs> and I said, This is the man who saved my life. And, and <laughs> everybody just started cheering, and cheering, and cheering. And it was just so great to have him get to come into my world you know, of, that I do. And what, what wouldn't have been there, you know, everything I do wouldn't would have disappeared. Um, yeah. If that if everything wow. hadn't been right done right that day. Yeah, but you did it, Rusty. You really did it. We did it. Yeah. Well, that's true. We that was it. a group effort. That was a group effort. Yes. And I you just listened to what I said. <laughs> <laughs> Most women don't, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I was just thinking. I mean, when I had said I'm not done yet. And there's still more I'm so, that's waiting in life. And when I think about since 2000, how many people have met in my classes, how many people yeah. have gotten married, how many babies have been born. How, so life, new life that's on this planet because I was still there to do it. It was a real wow. George Bailey moment, that moment. And then that was the first time when I said, and he's my hero, and it was the first time I heard him say, but you're my hero. And I just like froze in my tracks. And he said, no, you're my hero. Firemen need heroes too. And I right. you know, talk about you all the time with my family and, and this and that. And, and in January of last year, not this year, but previous year, I had been Rosie the Riveter in the opening ceremonies oh, of the Rose Parade. And as we know, it was so important to me because that motto, we can do it, we can do it. was my motto through my recovery, that it was... Right above your bed. <laughs> I remember it in the hospital. Yeah, everywhere. We can do it. And so um, he was at home on that day watching the Rose Parade. That's right. And you said, didn't you say to your family, I think that's Rusty? Uh, or, yeah, or I you... was watching it with a friend of mine. I'm not sure whether my daughter was there or not, but... I looked and I said, boy, that really looks like Rusty. <laughs> and I had no idea that you had done it. And then a couple of days later when we had talked, yeah, you told me you did. And I, it, it was like, wow. Yeah. yeah. So it was like this big, big coming together of everything. So I then, know. yeah, so taking my classes and, and now look at him. He's doing so great after his quintuple oh. bypass and he's and i got new plumbing <laughs> that's right and now um, so now uh, uh, steve wanted to know what's what's happening now what's oh well after 36 years um i'm retiring next week uh next uh friday will be my officially officially my last day although i'm still on the books until sunday um and from there, we'll see what happens. Uh, there are so many things that go through your mind when you're leaving. Um, it's uh, definitely bittersweet. I think it's time. Be a firefighter is a, is a young man's job, young woman's job. Um, and after you've given the information that you have, there's no other place to go but walk into the sunset, I guess. So we'll see what sunrise. happens. Or the sunrise, yeah, it <laughs> does open a new chapter. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I feel good, I feel healthy. Uh, I can't wait to get back in the gym again, get back into shape and continue dancing. <laughs> yeah. And so the best see. part is he just invited me to join him at his retirement. Oh, yes, so. yes. Yay! I know. It's going to be so much fun. It was great. That was what I wanted to to experience and hear and I never got to hear your side of the story and that was that was so great really I thought we had talked about this I never before. heard your no maybe but um, I never heard it uh, it's actually the cats I'm not really this much of yeah, a sissy we're, there's cats in this house I'm not really okay. a sissy I guess that's it Stephen thank you thank you Stephen Smith 
for doing yes, this, and thank you very for much. Christopher Fessenden. And just, let's thank this gentleman last. No, let's yeah. thank this nice lady first. Okay, we'll say it together. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you for you. Oh, oh, I love you, baby. I love you. Oh. Oh. What a great time. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>ago you were telling me about how it's really common to put when you go to calls that you have to put these callers on everybody basically like two or three a day uh, a lot yeah. yeah we'll put cervical callers on people that slip and fall people that are in traffic accidents um, an awful lot so it becomes uh, a routine uh, which means we do it a lot and so uh, we do it a lot. <laughs> uh, one thing that was interesting about Rusty's uh, injury is that, uh, as I mentioned before, when I took a look at her, I could tell that this was the real thing. So um, that's why I had to stop him and uh, make sure that we did it completely completely by the book. Is that what you were asking yeah, about? Yeah, and you said that when you looked at me, you saw something specific, and that was I wasn't... Um, yes, you were still absolutely motionless um, and with a fear in your eye that uh, is very unmistakable that you were hurting, that there was an injury there that, uh, that needed to be taken care of precisely the way that we were taught to take care of it. That's exactly what we did. You had said oh, there was something I wanted to say, don't I get to be by myself? Oh, and gosh. Say it. So now... Well, uh, I did say the one thing about her being my hero because she really is. We don't get a chance to see the aftermath of the things that, uh, that we do for people. Uh, it's a profession that I believe is a calling for most of us. Um, it's a way of life. Uh, it's not a job. But we don't see the aftermath. Uh, sometimes people will come into the fire station bringing us cookies and thanking us for for what we were able to do for him. But uh, to see long-term uh, is, is something that we're, we're not privileged to. When we went on Rusty, um, I didn't know who she was. I knew she was a, a poor girl that uh, had an unfortunate accident. I didn't know she was a famous dancer. Not that it mattered, but we don't understand these things. and. Being in this profession, and I guess anybody that goes through this, uh, that has an opportunity to um, make a difference in someone's life, um, does it. Whether it's a smile, whether it's a, a cervical collar, <laughs> um, you don't know what that has done for that person's life. Uh, I'm very, very fortunate um, to be blessed with Rusty and not the fact that she was injured but the fact that she uh, took a great amount of time to stay in touch with me and let me know how she's doing and she's incredible and that's why I have no reservation at all when I say you're my hero because what she's able to accomplish over the years has uh, is actually remarkable uh, I never knew she was a famous dancer and uh, so is my mom, so that's what makes it a little personal, a little more personal. Thanks for this opportunity. Yeah. This, is, um, this is actually the best part about uh, retiring, is I get to look back on, on great things like this. And uh, you're the greatest. <laughs> <laughs> I have no reservation in saying that. You absolutely are. Sorry we had to meet under those circumstances. <laughs> Yeah. They're going to give him a certificate um, on his retirement that l kind of lists the, the things that he's done in his career, and, and he's done some really wonderful things. And I told him that he says on, on the last line, you have to get them to write, and I saved Rusty, Rusty Frank's life. life. <laughs> I'm going to do it. I'm going to find a way to do, do it. it. I love it. That's a great <laughs> idea.
stars I heard a birdie sing So sweet, so sweet The moment I fell to you 